Hello and welcome to this audiobook presentation of The Future of Fitness, a beginner's guide to the changing world of fitness technology. Copyright and disclaimer information is available in the ebook version for your review. This content is laid out as follows. We'll start with an introduction, followed by eight chapters, and then a conclusion. So with that, let's jump right into the introduction of The Future of Fitness. Introduction. Why are we in need of fitness? Firstly, welcome to our beginner's guide on the future of fitness and wearable technology. I just want to say thank you for joining me as we embark on a quick journey of discovery into this ever-changing landscape of technological advancement. In this first introductory chapter, we will be going over why we are in need of fitness and how technology is and will play a huge part in getting us fit. Let's get started. First and foremost, here we are, living in an era where fast food meals that are rich in fat are available on every corner and advertised on every platform available. There's no wonder more and more people are suffering from obesity. Obesity, in the dictionary, is defined as the condition of being very fat or overweight, corpulence. There are dire consequences for those that are morbidly obese. Take a look at the facts and figures about obesity throughout the world. According to the World Health Organization, the WHO, obesity rates worldwide have doubled between 1980 and 2008. In 2014, 39% of adults 18 and over worldwide were overweight. It's about 2 billion people, with 19% of them considered obese, estimated at 1 billion people. Obesity statistics in children is just as disturbing. World Health Organization revealed that the number of overweight and obese children under 5 years old has risen to 41 million from 31 million in 1990. How is obesity measured? It is measured using BMI, or the Body Mass Index. This can be calculated by taking the weight of the individual in kilograms and dividing it by his or her height in meters. Mind you, this isn't going to distinguish weight that is associated with muscle from weight associated with fat. Therefore, with those thoughts in mind, the BMI provides an uncalculated measure of fatness. So, the BMI is considered a rough guide because it doesn't correspond to the same degree of fatness in every person. An individual that has a BMI that is larger than 25 is overweight. However, if an individual has a BMI that is 30, they are considered obese. Obesity is one of the leading causes of preventable death. A clinically obese child or adult is at risk of high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, joint problems, cancer, depression, and breathing difficulties. Probably the light beneath all these dreadful facts is that obesity can be reversed, especially with the help of fitness technology. Unlike those suffering from other diseases, an obese child or adult can fight obesity by prioritizing health and fitness before it becomes too late. If you or anyone you know is suffering from obesity, here are five main ways to reverse its effects. Number one, remove sugar, salt, and saturated fat. A high intake of salt, sugar, and saturated fat all contribute to obesity. The WHO has dropped its recommended fat, sugar, and salt intake to help reduce the global population's risk of diabetes and obesity. Number two, get enough sleep and control stress levels. Lack of sleep and chronic stress are the leading causes of insulin imbalance and weight gain. Poor sleeping patterns have been linked to damaged metabolism and increased cravings in carbohydrates and sugar. Religiously sticking to at least eight hours of uninterrupted sleep paired with activities that promote relaxation, like yoga, meditation, massage, etc., could help reverse the effects of type 2 diabetes. Number three, Get educated about nutrition. Food is the body's fuel that enables us to think and perform day-to-day -day tasks, but it is important to be mindful of food choices. Aside from maintaining WHO-recommended fat, sugar, and salt intake, adding whole, unprocessed foods, such as vegetables, fruits, and nuts, to the diet can prevent insulin resistance and, in turn, help reverse obesity. 
The right set of multivitamins and supplements can also promote proper metabolizing of fat and sugar. If you are unsure of the diet and supplements suitable for you, it is best to seek advice from a nutritionist. Number four, exercise. Any physical activity, may it be walking for several hours or performing high intensity interval training for 30 minutes, is better than nothing. Make sure to get the heart rate up whenever you exercise. Number five, measure progress. Many studies have shown that people who track their diet and exercise progress with a notebook or spreadsheet lose twice as much weight. Self-monitoring had been a tedious task since BMI measurements, calorie intake, and physical activities are logged in manually, but fitness phone apps made it much easier. Now with fitness trackers that can monitor everything from steps, distance ran, speed, estimated calories burned, and even sleeping patterns, self-monitoring provides much more motivation than ever. Anyone who has been diagnosed with obesity may find the situation bleak, but this shouldn't be the case. Changes in lifestyle, diet, and fitness could help prevent or revert the effects of obesity, and with the aid of fitness technology, the obesity situation may be easier to beat than ever. Well, that's a basic introduction into the current obesity situation in the world, and why we need fitness and health. Over the next few chapters, we will take a more in-depth look at what wearable tech is, how it can aid fitness, and how it affects you. Are you ready? Let's go.